بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلاة وسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all of those who will be joining with us now or later through our Facebook page, YouTube channel and live streaming via our Channel S website It's broadcasted live from the studio of Channel S Watch is the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the children. In our last week episode, we have touched upon how as parents we need to nurture our children, how do we educate them, protect them, guide them through their productive um, adulthood life. In our tonight's topic, we will be discussing about how did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam engage with the children, what did he do to discipline the children, and what was his vision, vision with the children, those who became then the global citizen ambassadors of not only Islam, but the whole global universe. Inshallah, to discuss this topic, we have with us a very respected and honorable guest. He is the graduate from Al Adhar University, Egypt, respected Imam and Khatib of the London Central Mosque and the Islamic Cultural Center, famously known as Regent's Park Mosque. In fact, he's the first British Bangladeshi Imam and Khatib, Sheikh Qadi Lutur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, first of all, thank you very much for joining with us so late at night. It's my pleasure. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, I would like to start with my first question for tonight. Mm -hmm. How did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam engage and interact with the children? Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alladhi akmala lana deenana wa atamma alayna ni'matahu wa radhiya lana al-islam deena. Allahumma radhiyna billahi rabba wa bil-islam deena. Wa bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya wa rasoola. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. After praising Allah and sending salam and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And I also testify that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the final messenger and slave of Allah. My dear uh, brothers and sisters and respected viewers, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a prophet of the whole entire humanity. He was kind and merciful with everybody in society. And especially he was kind with the weak and less privileged people of the society. He was extremely kind with al-fuqara al masakin He was kind with poor and people who are weak in the society. He was kind and merciful with elderly people. He was kind with women. And he was kind, most importantly, with children. Um um, I just wanted to add a little bit there. Um, what do you mean when you say weak? Uh, the people who generally could be under the authority of other people or mm. under the supervision or guardianship of other people. Mm -hmm. So um, the people who are like um, probably uh, employed, the people who are uh, maybe poor, people who are ch like you know elderly, uh, they need care, okay. uh, also the children. So Prophet Sallallahu was really kind and merciful towards these people. So it's not only about physical weakness? No, no, no. Okay. no, no. Um, also, uh, it is normal for a person to be kind and respectful towards someone who is bigger than him or older stronger than him, than him mm. or older than him. Mm -hmm. But the, the good character of a person appears, husnul akhlaq appears, when he is kind, merciful, and respectful towards the people who are weaker or those who are under his authority or under his guardianship. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was extremely kind with these kind of people in society. Um, tonight we would like to highlight upon the relationship of the Holy Prophet, uh, between the Holy Prophet and children, alayhi salatu was salam. Um, now, we can see Holy Prophet Muhammad was com extremely compassionate and kind with the children to the extent that he would make his salah, he would make his prayer shorter. <coughs> so, suppose if he's praying and if you heard the children are crying, 
then he would make the salah shorter. Ibadah of Allah, which is one of the most important pillars in Islam. But if you heard the children are crying behind, then he would try and make the salah as short as possible so the women can go and take care of the children. Um, there's a fiqh issue that I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you. We do notice in different masajids mm -hmm. that sometimes the baby or the child is mm -hmm. constantly crying, yeah. but the father or the mother mm -hmm. does not want to break the salah. Mm -hmm. But that noise or the crying baby mm -hmm. is basically causing a disturbance to, hold, to the all entire of the musallis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what should, on that specific occasion, the father or the mother or the child do? I think do? If, if, if a father or a mother uh, are, uh, are aware or is aware of like the child's situation or if he's going to be crying, too much, which will cause some disturbance um, to other Muslims worshippers, then I think it is best to to probably leave the mosque or maybe like to not come with the children who cry too much or excessively in the mosque. But obviously if, if a child comes and then he starts crying, then that's a different issue. But the Prophet Muhammad if you had any a child is crying or children are crying, then he would make the salah shorter. Also, um, we see in the prophetic tradition, the Prophet ﷺ, he would allow his grandchildren, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhu, to come and, and play with him while he is in worship, while he is mm -hmm. praying. This shows the extreme mercy and kindness and, 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 and uh, rahmah of Rasulullah ﷺ towards the children. I want to mention also a hadith of, uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu which is on the authority of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu. And obviously we all know Anas ibn Malik, he, was, uh, uh, he, was, he served the Holy Prophet Muhammad for numerous years and he knows the Holy Prophet more than anybody else. So he said in a statement, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا كَانَ أَرْحَمْ بِالْعِيَالِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that I have not seen anyone more compassionate, more merciful, more kind than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the children. This is a statement of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. So we see certain incidents that happened between the Holy Prophet and his grandchildren Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhu. So there's an incident where it says that um, uh, once upon a time, um, uh, Holy Prophet Muhammad here met his grandson Al Hussein radiallahu anhu, Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu. And he was a young child, uh, and he was playing. Um, so Prophet Sallallahu he went forward and he, uh, he, he stretched his hand and he wanted to hold Hussein radiallahu anhu, but he, he kind of left, he, he ran away. Mm -hmm. So Prophet Sallallahu he was running after Hussein radiallahu anhu <coughs> and he was, uh, uh, he was, he was uh, laughing and he was uh, making uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu happy and he was trying to play with him until he, um, he got him and he touched uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu. Um, the following question now, um, that arises on many occasions, especially in our generation mm -hmm. now, a lot of the parents complain about that ch the children are too mischievous or they're behaving too much badly. Mm -hmm. When I say too much badly, children are children at the end yeah, of the yes. day. Mm -hmm. It might differ from one child to another, mm -hmm. but I think the level of patience for parents, mm -hmm. somehow we find it more now, lesser than compared to our generation mm -hmm. when we had our parents. Mm -hmm. Now, any small thing that happens, or if the child is slightly more mischievous than other, a lot of people or the extended family recommend them, you need to take to a local imam, or you need to, mm -hmm. he needs to be seen by someone, mm -hmm. he needs to be given mm -hmm. some sort of uh, water, or holy yeah. water. I think the, now, the how does a parent yeah, I think ch the children are different. Some children <coughs> can be quite naughty, and uh, some children can be excessively uh, behaving very um, abnormally. But uh, we'll come to that point later on. But at the moment, we're talking about the mm -hmm. Prophet's relationship with children generally. But obviously, we're not saying this was the case probably at all time, but generally how he was. Because we have something, uh, the usul, the principle. Okay. And then we have, uh, obviously, circumstance, we have ex exceptional situations. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was um, also um, a, a, one of his grandchildren um, would come uh, and uh, right on his on his shoulder while he would pray. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he would carry the child and he would uh, leave him aside while he's giving sujda and ruku'ah. But obviously this is not the original case. That shouldn't be done 
intentionally. Mm. But if, if children happen to be around the fathers or, or relatives, then, then that's okay. I mean, imagine like if a child comes and disturbs us, some of us, we become very offended, Correct. we become very emotional, we become very angry. But uh, children are children, as you said earlier, because they are, uh, a lot of times they don't know what they're doing. Um, so that's very, very rightly you have said. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time we also notice mm -hmm. that if it's my children, if it's our children, yeah. we tolerate it. But, but if it's someone else's else, children, we, we can't even tolerate for a second. Yeah, that is, that is, try, that is, that is true. Um, also, uh, if we look at uh, the rahmah and mercy of our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the authority of uh, Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu and hadith is in the books of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, rahimahum Allah, um, they, they said that uh, the, the Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu said, "Qabbal Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al-Hasan ibn Ali." The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he kissed Hasan radiyallahu anhu, his grandson. وعنده الأقرع ابن حابس التميم جالسا. and while he kissed Hassan رضي الله عنه, there was a man, Bedouin Arab man, um, uh, called أقرع ابن حابس التميم was sitting right next to the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فقال الأقرع so أقرع he was curious, he was shocked to see the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم kissing a child. so he said إن لعشرة من الولد ما قبلت منهم أحدا. he said that I have ten children and I've never kissed None of them. I never kissed any one of them. فَنَظَرَ إِلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So the Prophet ﷺ, he looked at him and he was shocked and he was surprised to hear that statement from أَقْرَعَ ibn حَابِسِ التَّمِيمِ And then he said, مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُ لَا يُرْحَمْ Very important statement he made. I think every one of us should keep that in our mind, in our heart, in our memory for the rest of the life. The Prophet ﷺ made a important statement where he said man la yarham la yurham that the one who doesn't show any mercy and kindness he will no one will show mercy and kindness to him so if anyone doesn't if someone doesn't show the mercy and kindness to the people to, to the creation of allah to um the to in, in animals insects and uh, as we say like to the creation of allah in general then nothing will no one will show the mercy to him so he will not be considered or he will not be treated with mercy and kindness neither for the creation nor from the from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so man la yarham la yurham absolutely important to be compassionate and kind with our children now also we see the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi he would comfort the children by touching their heads so we see there's a hadith on the authority of imam al nasai رحمه الله إمام النساء رحمه الله عن أنس رضي الله عنه عند أثرد في أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يزور الأنصار. so the holy prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم he would visit أنصار the the people of مدينة the أنصار in مدينة منورة ويسلم على صبيانهم and he would give salam to them he would read salam upon them. now in our society sometimes we see that uh, people, um, <coughs> they feel maybe low uh, when they give salam to the children. Or, Say, oh. or, or there is some sort of understanding that the salam needs to come from someone who is younger yeah. than the person who is yes. older. Yeah. And I think, more, is it something more to do with cultural than Islam? Um, no, there, there are some scholars, they said, uh, in order to discipline, in order to teach the mannerism to our children, that we ask them to give salam. But okay. this shouldn't be the... The, or the, 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 the case or general case, meaning the children should give salam to the elders so that they're, they're training themselves, so okay. they're learning, mm. they're educating themselves. But we are and we should give salam to our children. And we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nobody could give salam um, to anyone before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would, he would, nobody could beat him in giving salam. So he would say salam before anyone. And obviously the hadith of Rasulullah where he says, As-salamu qabla al-kalam. The salam should be given before starting any conversation. Did he not say, Abshu salam baynakum? Abshu salam baynakum, yeah, because also this increased the love. When you spread salam, salam, what does salam is? Peace. You are making dua literally to, 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 be, to, the, um, to spread the peace uh, amongst the people. There is another element there I need to touch upon. Is as soon as you say salam to someone, even if he's your enemy, can he still be your enemy? Because the translation is completely different to someone who considers the other person to be the enemy. 
Exactly. So when you say assalamu alaikum, you're not just saying some of us we do not know the meaning of salam. Right. It means I make dua to Allah to bestow his peace and mercy upon you. So right. be peace be upon you. It, it's a dua, it's a supplication. So as soon as we're saying assalamu alaikum, and this this is a strong sunnah of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we give salam, to answer the salam is much more important than giving salam. Because giving salam is sunnah, but answer the answering salam is wajib. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, the haqqul muslimi ala al muslimi khamsun. There are five rights of a Muslim over his fellow Muslim brother or sister. And then he said, Raddu salami, answering salam. So if someone gives salam, assalamu alaikum, then you say nicely, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But we see in our society, uh, in our communities, when you give salam to somebody, uh, then, then he he wouldn't answer, or he would he would just uh, nod his uh, head, or he would just M maybe in particular if he has some sort of enmity or some sort of dislike from that person. But generally, I have seen in our culture when you give salam to people, amade shomajer mudde jokon amra kaow ke salam dey, tokon salamir uttor shundar baba dawa na. Assalamu alaikum. Amra jokon Bangladeshi dey, tokon onik cha cha sen onun burabbi dey ke bol assalamu alaikum sa. Bol kida khobar bala so. Uh, and did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not mention in the verse where you So um, so we should answer, we should respond to salam. And not only that when a child gives salam to you, then when we say wa alaikum salam prophet, they become happy because you gave importance to him. He knows that you responded nicely, warmly. This is another important that the child psychiatrist or the, the doctors, the children doctors, they say, the child's psychological importance, he's got emotional need as well. And what about giving that utmost importance and respect to the child, feeling him that he's an important exactly. within the life, making, within our parents' making life. Making him yes, feel important in society. Um, so, um, so salam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he would give salam to the children. So ala sibyanihim, wa yamsahu ala ruusihim, and he would comfort the children <coughs> by touching their heads. And this is this was a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That also shows the kindness. Nowadays we have people. Someone, if someone reaches a good status, if someone becomes like a doctor or someone like a uh, an important person in society, then he would look down upon other people. But Subhanallah, man tawadu alillah rafa'ahu Allah. Whoever uh, lowers himself for the sake of Allah, humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah the Almighty elevates him. This is, look, the Holy Prophet Muhammad was the most humble individual. Yes, but at the same time, he was the most important and honored individual in the history of humanity. So he would give salam and he would touch the, the, the heads of children in order to comfort them. The Holy Quran al Karim also gives us a lot of stories. Uh, regarding uh, the people before Islam, like we know the famous story of Luqman Hakim, indeed, uh, and what he, how he spoke to his beloved son, his child. So Allah the Almighty says in the Noble Quran, and He quotes the beautiful conversation that took between uh, Luqman and his and his beloved child. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim." وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقُمَانُ لِبِنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ So Luqman Hakim, he is advising his son and he's teaching his son the oneness of Allah, Tawheed, the wahdani of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is teaching his child the great, the great sin uh, sins of, of shirk, associ associating partnership with Allah. So he says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ When Luqman, Hakim, he told his beloved son, and while he's giving him wa'ad, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ While he's advising him, يَا بُنَيْ Look at the word that he used, يَا بُنَيْ So بُنَيْ, originally the word son is ibn in Arabic, mm. ibn, يَا ibni. But when you say يَا بُنَيْ it has a lot of love and mercy and compassion in that word, bunay. So when you say, Ya bunay. So Allah the Almighty, He said, the Luqman told his son, Ya bunay. So before teaching the great lessons, He is creating love and mercy 
between him and his son. So he said, Ya Bunay, la tu shirk billah. Do not associate any partnership with Allah. Do not do any shirk. Because shirk is, is one of the greatest sins that ever someone can commit. Now, obviously, there are different types of shirk. There are shirk like jali, like apparent and clear shirk. That you say Allah has a partner, Allah has son, Allah has daughter, and so on and so forth. But there are also shirk al-khafi. So, for example, instead of asking Allah the Almighty, you ask somebody else, seek help from someone else, and he is not able to do that help. He's not able to offer that help, and you ask him for that help, such as we, we sp spoke last week, that asking a um, child, uh, asking for a child to somebody that who is not able to give a child, but he can make dua. So these kind of things we have in our societies. So ya bunay la tu shirk billah, oh my beloved child, do not commit any shirk. And then he said, inna shirk la zulmun nazim. Indeed. Associating partnership with Allah is one of the greatest sins that ever someone can commit. So Luqman Hakim spoke to his son very beautifully. And then we see another hadith in the uh, in the in the in the Sahih at Tirmidhi in the Sunan at Tirmidhi on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. And he also said that Kuntu Khalf and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once he was behind the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Oh uh, Ya Ghulam, again addressing a child with Ghulam, the word Ghulam is also contains a lot of mercy and, 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 and yeah, compassion. A lot of people might interpret in our languages in a different perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean that's, that's, the, that's a different thing. Ghulam uh, has more than one meaning, but Ghulam also means child. Ghulam also means like someone, when you love somebody, you say Ya Ghulam. Okay, okay. Um, we'll continue uh, from there after a short break. It's time for a short okay, break now, and then we'll no continue problem. that discussion. Inshallah. My dear viewers, we have been listening to a very important discussion. Now, tonight's topic for discussion is the Holy Prophet and the children. We have been listening to how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving utmost importance to his to the children, respect, and being very friendly towards them. And one of the important keywords that our guest has touched upon being compassionate and merciful towards the children. We'll continue our discussion, and the, in our second segment we will touch upon what are the common mistakes that as parents we are making and how can we improve those and how can we build that or strengthen our relationship with our children. Do not go too far away. We'll be right back in a few moments. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> 